and we're live. Hi everyone, good morning. I know that we're a few minutes early. We're a few minutes early, it's two minutes before 11. So I wanna welcome everyone to Conversations With. I am Gladys Mizrahi, for those of you who do not know me, I am commissioner of the city of Aventura, and I'm also part of the board of Friends of Shiva Medical Center. And I'm really, really excited to have this conversation today because I wanted everyone to know how Shiva is doing peace through medicine. And we're very lucky to have Joel with us. With the time differences, what what time is it for you in Israel? Actually, right now is uh, one minute uh, to five p.m. And, okay, uh, we're not that bad. No, so uh, until you will go to a uh, winter clock uh, and it's come back to seven hours. Now we are six, only six hours ahead of you. So yeah. good morning, uh, America. And um, good afternoon, Israel. Correct. Good afternoon, Israel. Uh, Joel, please introduce yourself. So, uh, glad as you um, mentioned, uh, my name is Joel Areven. Um, I've been in Chiba in the last four years after retiring from the army after 28 um, six of um, serving um, the, most of them in the medical corps joined Shiba and um, right now my position is to add the um, um, international division and resource development here at Shiba Medical Center. Thank you for being with us. Also, let me start with one question. I know that you've got a lot of breakthrough treatments, you've learned a lot about COVID, being that we're almost like what, eight months into the a global pandemic, but now we are in the second wave and I understand that Israel has also a second wave. So can you tell us a little bit on what have you seen, the differences and how you're dealing with this? Yes, absolutely. So right now, as you mentioned, we are, uh, I will say, just over the edge of the second uh, wave. And I think the first thing that I want to tell you that uh, we are planning for the third wave. And the rest of the world need to plan also for third wave and maybe for fourth wave, because the nature of this disease is still unknown. And what we can see from, um, from one time to the other time that it's changing. So probably the virus uh, RNA, because it doesn't carry a DNA, but it carries the RNA. The RNA is changing dramatically when you move from person to person, which means that in this uh, wave, we see more critical um, uh, condition patient and the age is getting uh, down so if the, in the first wave we saw a lot of adults now we see 40 to 50 is the average age of um, sick people here in Israel and even though the, uh, those who are going to ICU situation we see younger people which going to critical care uh, and critical conditions um, which was unfamiliar for us in the first wave. So um, regarding the uh, pandemic and the, uh, the numbers, of course, in the, in, the, in the peak, we went to 8,000 new cases every day. Uh, and then we took an action. And right now we are controlling the situation below 1,000 new cases every day. We also increased dramatically the numbers of the tests that Israel is taking every day. And now we are about 40, 41,000 tests every day. I know regarding the state, it's small numbers, but let's talk about average and, and, and rate and not numbers because it 
the really numbers are not telling us the, the whole story. Um, regarding social distancing, there is still uh, some uh, obligation and some restrictions are going on. Uh, on. For, for example, schools are not open yet. And the government decided that we will won't uh, go you know, with reliefs every two weeks, as they said before. But now the action will be taken when we hit the limit uh, uh, of new cases from the, the test that we are taking overall in the country, which means that the ratio between new, new uh, patient and the number of the test will be the one who will determine if we are going back to lockdown or we are going forward with releasing the rest of the market and open the malls and open uh, more schools and open the restaurants which are closed right now besides trying to enforce social distancing how else are you trying to contain the pandemic before social distancing we believe that this is the solution for most of our problems so keep the mask on your face every time even in my room, when I sit lonely, I, I forgot to take it uh, um, sometime because it became a second nature. So taking the mask and taking off your own um, hands hygiene and social distancing, I think this is the key elements and very, very simple because you can educate your uh, smallest kids to do though and you, you can educate any society, just put the mask and, and um, keep social distancing as much as you can and take care of your hygiene. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails saying that the mask is actually worse for you. I do not believe in it. I believe masks are saving lives, that this is a way we should be going to. But can you counteract that part for everybody that's watching us? that really masks can save our lives? Absolutely, and, and we demonstrated here in, uh, in many uh, experiments that uh, without the mask, your chance to um, um, catch the, um, the virus is um, 25%, and, and when you are putting the mask, you are decreasing it to um, um, almost less than 5%. So the mask is lifesaver, but you need to replace it every day. So if you are using a disposable one and keep it for a week, that is not going to work. You need to replace it. Okay. So throw it to the garbage and use another one. Got it. So now that we're, let me ask you something else. What breakthroughs have you seen in the treatment of COVID? What are you doing to eliminate the death mortality with patients? Uh, it's a good question. And, uh, you know, we, after the first uh, uh, wave finished, we sit down, we sat down here at Chiba and, and did a, a long, long briefing, which everyone was um, speaking very openly about his mistakes and the lessons learned that he's taking. And we divided it into operational uh, lessons learned and clinical lessons learned. But if we are speaking about clinical lessons learned, and this is what you are focusing, I think the most important one is that we did a, a, a lot of rethinking about early ventilation. If the first wave was uh, defined by very rapid and very soon going on ventilation, of course, intubation, sedation, and ventilation, I think the big change from the first wave to the second wave is to considering ventilation as the last frontier of treatment. So not uh, using ventilation so rapidly, try to keep people on masks, or uh, open frame uh, oxygenation and um, use the uh, oxygenation with full intubation only for the last frontier. This is the first lesson learned. The, the second lesson learned is to be very, very aggressive with, uh, with those treatments that we are calling antiviral 
treatment. So start the antiviral treatment as soon as we can. And the third one is to treat the side effects that we learn about. For example, we now know that there is a big deal of anticoagulation uh, agent that involving an inflammatory agent that inf involving uh, this situation. So treating ant with anticoagulants or coagulants. So taking care of the coagulations and, and um, controlling the uh, inflammatory but what, what we are calling the cytokine storm, control it uh, as fast as we can. I think this is amazing. Uh, let me ask you something. As part of the antiviral treatment, is it, does it have anything to do with plasma? And the reason that I'm asking you is because Shiva, for those of you who don't know, Shiva has been named one of the 10 best hospitals in the world. And this is why we trust that you guys have uh, a take on this. Like your opinion, your lessons learned real, make real value. Yes, uh, so the, the plasma issue is a, is a big debate in Israel. Um, we took the uh, position that thought that uh, plasma and plasma agents, especially when you take them from uh, the ones who recover from, uh, from COVID, it might be working. Unfortunately, um, the numbers are still uh, very low that I can tell you statistically uh, that I'm sure that it's working. There are two major clinical studies and work that running right now in at Chiba and in Adassa. And I think it's, it's too early to determine that uh, it, it, if it's working or not working. Uh, my personal belief, uh, it, it should work, but uh, you know, uh, only time can say, and still it's very, very young uh, experiment that um, still we need to wait. Got it. I have only one last question on COVID because I really want to move forward with the rest. Uh, testing and trace contacting. Tell me, I know that you increase testing. I think that's the best way to do it in contact tracing, but you need to have a plan for it. So is that being part of the cure? Is that being part of, of containing the pandemic? Yes, absolutely. Um, and actually, right now, the state of Israel is using, um, I think, what is the most common around the world? It's the swab testing. And this is for mass testing. You know, when you need to test 40,000, 50,000 people a day, you need something very cheap, uh, reliable, and um, easy to do. Because if you need uh, to educate nurse to do a very complicated test, then and it takes five minutes, so it, it's uh, you, you wasting your money. So right now the, the swab is is uh, cheap, is very easy to learn. Even a technician can do it, and it's very safe and easy to go uh, to the lab and have the, uh, the test and um, get the results very, very soon. But we are using in the hospital, when we are doing our own test on our own patient that entering the OR or the ER, we have a different system of, of testing and we're using much, much, much more complicated tested as, as advanced PCRs and even uh, uh, a quick testing that uh, uh, sometimes we need uh, the answer for 15 or 20 seconds. Um, so there are several of, of uh, companies and several of technologies. Some of them inaugurate from Shiba as, uh, for example, uh, Insight, what called right Virusite, uh, which um, taking a sample from your uh, uh, sleeve slavery uh, glands and, and uh, you spit it uh, uh, on a tube and then going into a machine that can tell you very, very soon within 15 or 20 seconds if you are 
um, of, of coronavirus uh, in your upper respiratory um, tract. So um, besides social distancing, I think increasing uh, the ability and the exposure for uh, testing is very, very important to control the pandemic. I have to agree with you 100%. So now my big question. How are you guys, how is Shiva involved in the vaccine? Okay. Um, right now there are, if I'm correct, 11 groups around the world that uh, came to the position that they now, um, you know, they, they passed the safety tests. And now they're moving to first in men, which is a, in a very, very crucial and, and delicate procedure that might take between um, three to six months this period of time. It depends uh, on the amount of, of the testing that the, and, and the follow up that they need to do. And I'm mostly regarding to the FDA procedures because, you know, most of the Western world are aiming uh, the FDA to get uh, uh, approval. So right now we are dealing with two groups uh, that uh, develop um, a vaccine. The first group is starting the uh, experiment or the trial here at Chiba next week. Actually, I, I myself volunteer to this uh, procedure. So I'm going to take uh, a vaccine. So you can follow up on me if I'm growing a tail or a rabbit uh, ears very, very soon, I can tell you. But I have a full confidence uh, um, this is a Merck uh, vaccine uh, and we are, uh, I am amongst uh, 100 people that uh, was chosen and volunteer actually, I volunteered, I, I didn't, uh, was chosen, I volunteered uh, to this experiment. So I will get the shot next week and um, they will follow up with me in the next uh, coming month to see if I'm developing any side effects and if my level of anti antibodies are increasing dramatically enough to protect me from the, um, from the COVID. The second trial will start mon one month later and this is an Israeli company that developed it here in Israel with the, our Institute of uh, Biological and uh, Antiviral uh, Institute here in, in, in Tel Aviv area. And uh, as I said, the trial will, will start one month later. So I will say in the uh, beginning of December, we are going to launch the second one. The first trial is running also simultaneously with Adassa Medical Center in Jerusalem. So we are the first um, two locations in the world that studying the test for Merck. Merck, but Merck in Israel, or are you working with Merck in the US as well? Um, it's Merck International. International, okay. Did you ever have, uh, were you ever sick with the virus or no? You Any don't kind of virus? Me? Did you ever get the virus or no? You, you're... No, only, no. only, no, no, no. They take to the experiment only healthy people between the age of 20 to 50. So no drugs, good health and no, no um, history of uh, COVID. Got it. So can you please let us know and keep us updated? Absolutely. Thank you so much. So no more COVID. <laughs> We're moving forward. Hope so. We're moving forward. Uh, you were one of the first people to go to Dubai. Truth. Tell us about it. Well, uh, really, it was a, a very uh, upscaling and amazing experience for me to be one of the first uh, um, people from Sheba and um, very fewest uh, from Israel that had the chance to flow um, over be before um, commercial flights are starting at the end of December. And I felt among family. Uh, we deserve and we got a very warm welcome 
I'm not speaking about high officials because I didn't, um, I didn't met high officials. I met simple people, um, um, physicians, um, businessmen. So the, it's very, very warm welcome and very uh, open hands. And, and they are really, they said to me, listen, Yoel, we have nothing with you. Correct. We didn't fight with you. We didn't hate you. Uh, we were educated by uh, people who said to us, um, Israel is uh, having a very bad things, are doing very bad things from grade, first grade to 12th grade. All my teachers were Palestinians. And I've been taught by them year by year that you are a murderer, you are a rapist and, and, and you did uh, a very bad thing to the Palestinians. And when we met, first time we met Jewish people, we were shocked. That's what they told me. They, most of them are going to learn in, in the States or in, uh, you know, outside. And then they have a chance to first time to meet a Jew. And they shocked. And we don't have four. <laughs> no. No tail and no horn, and, and okay, most of us are nice people who just want to live in peace in our, uh, you know, piece of property that God gave us. So we have no conflict with them. And I think what they are admiring, because the Emirates and, and Israel are, are very close and, and, and almost the same, you know, the same culture, the same, uh, even the same uh, uh, weather. And they are amazed what we achieved in 70 years. And I'm not speaking about high buildings. No. And because we don't have those Mother Nature gifts that they got. So although we are lacking all those Mother Nature gifts, we develop this amazing society and this amazing uh, infrastructure for growth. Without oil, without uh, uh, you know gas, nothing. The same desert, but without the all the, the goodies that all the goodies, all the benefits that uh, God can give us. So only on our personnel, only our manhood, and they are admiring, and they are uh, keen to understand how it works, how we can succeed like you, not by putting 800 meters uh, buildings, because it's, it's, it's nothing. It's, it, you have money, you, you can do it. Put it up, yes. It's yeah, but wh luxury. what is, in, what is in, inside here that, bring, uh, that makes you so brilliant, so uh, flourishing? Why are you the, the startup nation? Why are not we the startup nation? What, what is so different? What is the spice that you are eating that's making you so different? And they are very curious to understand and to, to figure. And now, and then they will duplicate it. Absolutely. But that's the, whole, that's the whole idea. To be a leader and to teach others how to do it. I Absolutely. was very impressed when I met you. And a lot of people don't know about this. That Shiva treats everybody the same no matter if you're coming from palestine no matter where you're coming from it is the same treatment to everyone and i remember you had a story about a mother who took her son can you please tell everybody that story yeah, this, this story taking us to um, the beginning of the fightings at the Golan Heights when Assad regime just about to collapse. I speak about um, four years ago, maybe five years ago. And one night in very dark February, cold February, um, you know, the fence at the Golan Heights is an indicative fence, which means that if someone is touching the fence, someone is seeing it. Um, in Israel. So they got an indication that the fence is shaking. And they asked the next patrol to go there and see what's happened. And when the patrol uh, came to the fence and, and put a light, they saw it, it was a very cold night of, of mid-February, heavy raining, 
they saw um, a figure, they didn't realize at the, at, the, at the first moment, but it was a, a young lady which carrying two babies on her hands. So they opened the gates and let her in and give her um, shelter and, you know, blankets. And she told them that she's running away from the riots. Her village were bombed by Assad regime. Uh, her husband and two other kids were killed. And she's carrying two bed wounded uh, kids. And she went to the head of the village, what they call Mukhtar, the Mukhtar of the, of the village and ask him, what should I do? If I go east, I will, um, I will go to Assad soldiers, they probably will slaughter me. If I go west, I'm going to the devils. What should I do? And the and devils Muhtar, was Israel, right? Of course, we are That's Western, right. to, we are western to, to Syria. And the, the Muhtar told her, yes, you are going to the devil, the devil won't kill you. So, yes, they are the devils, but they won't kill you. So you will still keep alive. So, so she walked a few miles in the, this very cold, heavy, dark, raining evening, and she is approaching the fence. And the medics saw her situation, immediately arranged a chopper. And again, it's a dark night of mid-February, heavy raining, it's risky but they understand that they need to take an action right now because the kids are, was uh, under, uh, under the ruins and the situation with, the, with them is dramatically can change every minute. The chopper came and flew them to Sheba. The moment she landed Sheba, and this story came out of the, you know, we cannot keep it secretly here. We were floated by Israelis, that came and, and offer her home and shelter and food and clothes. Ending the story, when she left Sheba after a few months, she, she, she needed a truck to take all the goods, things that she get from the Israeli, and I'm not speaking about that we, um, the two kids will recover, fully recover, and she came back and, and went back to uh, Syria and came back a few months later I cannot tell you how, but she came back to thank the staff and to say that she is safe and the kids are safe and she wants to come back just to say thank you for all the teams, the army teams, Sheba teams that took care of her and two her babies and bring them back home. Oh, that's so nice. And, and you know, Gladys, I told you many, many times, I think every time that we are, uh, have a chance to meet, um, that in our tough neighborhood, the only non-political issue is medical care and or, or health care. Right. We can disagree and we can argue with our neighbors on everything. Our leaders can argue on every subject in life. I think the only non-political, untouchable issue is health care. For example, right now, Sai Barikat, number two in the Palestinian Authority, which is the biggest um, advocate against Israel, hospitalized in Israel and taken care by us. So when it comes to healthcare, we close our eyes, we block our emotions, because we know what we need to do. We take an oath and we need to bring the oath into reality. And save a life. And save a life, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I know that we're running out of time, but I don't want to leave you without telling me about peace through medicine and how you have been building bridges, training people, and bringing everybody together in the, in the Gulf. So it's not just in the Gulf, it's, it's the JCC, what we call the Gulf, but also MENA, which is uh, Middle East and, and, and Africa. Um, and you heard, probably heard about Sudan that are uh, going into peace treaty with Israel and, and more uh, African countries, Muslim African countries are in the way. As I told you before, when we realized that medicine is the only non-political, untouchable 
area that people can relate it with safely, we started to develop the idea that only um, medicine could, can be the, the, the bridge, the real bridge uh, to prosperity and to make the nations and the tribes that living in our tough neighborhood together. And therefore, from uh, last year, when Professor Kreis went to Bahrain uh, Committee, which handled by uh, Stephen Menuchin and the American administration and some high levels from the Emirates, he put the seeds of this idea, of this uh, uh, initiative, that we, um, we should develop our relations upon medicine. And I'm not speaking just about, you know, uh, getting patients from, um, uh, for medical tourism, which now are coming, but also to educate the others, send our physician to educate other physicians or other countries that need to be educated. Also doing mutual research, because at the end of the day, we are sharing the same environment. For example, the Lishmania uh, disease, or the avian flu, it's a regional pandemic. So you cannot control it only by uh, protecting Israel. What, what is the situation in Jordan is very important because we have a closed border, which is open border with Jordan. Jordan have an open border with uh, Iraq. Israel have a border with Egypt. So when you are treating those kind of, uh, of aerial pandemics, you cannot be focused only on yourself. You need to see what's going on on the neighborhood and the wider neighborhood and try to solve the problem widely and not just here in, the, uh, in our corner. And, and we think, and we got the feedback from our partners in the Gulf area that they think the same. They think that this is really a true bridge that can be settled between nations, and maybe, maybe we will bring the peace through medicine. Through medicine. Uh, I know that you are funded a lot by donations. Who tell you that? <laughs> it's a big, big part of how you guys are funded and all the money that goes into research, goes into saving lives. So can you please tell us about, you're doing a real big outreach through a gala. Yes, yes. And I we know are we planning. couldn't do the gala and have you personally come here. So the advantage is going virtual. So please invite yeah. everyone. As we say, Shanaba, maybe next year we can go personally, but right now, under COVID restriction, we need to think differently. And uh, we are planning with all Shiba hubs around the globe. So it's not just uh, North America, it's North America, it's Canada, it's Europe, it's South America, it's Latin America, uh, it's South Africa and Australia, the newest hub for Shiba. So it's really an international uh, event taking care, taking their part in, in, in uh, November 22nd, virtually live from Sheba. We are going to be live, broadcasting live from Sheba to all, all over the world. Uh, very, very rich and, and uh, interesting uh, um, um, plenary. Many uh, guests that are going to come uh, and, and be with us or, uh, along with our uh, um, board all over the world and we are expecting everyone and I'm inviting right now everyone to join us November 22nd. I'm gonna be there. I hope you will be there also. Oh, you know I'm going to be there. I know. I know, I know I'm part of the Florida Friends of Sheba. So Joel, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that, that your trial vaccine works. Let, before I go, I have, a, there, I have a curious question. Why did you choose to go on trial with the Merrick vaccine as opposed to the one that's being led by Israel? Only because it's the first one. Um, 
actually they are walking the same. Both of them are walking on the RNA of the virus and blocking the RNA ability to duplicate himself. Okay. So only because uh, they are uh, asked for 100 people, for cohort of 100 people, and this is the first trial. Um, otherwise, I have no choice to go to the Merck or the Israeli. For me, it's, it's just the same. It, just Merck was the first and, and they need uh, 100 person to start. So I volunteer and hope that I, I won't raise a rabbit here. Um, here. That's great. So if everything goes okay, what timeline are we looking at? As I said before, uh, if everything is, uh, let's say, let's talk success oriented, um, I'm with Merck around the second quarter of next year. The second quarter, so it will be distributed to everyone by the summer, late fall. Yeah, you know, because um, you, they need to go with the result to FDA, get the final approvals if success oriented, and then going into manufacturing, which is also taking some time to manufacture oh, right. yeah. a few billions of, of vaccines. So, but I, I'm, I'm quite sure that in, at the time of, uh, I will say, next April, at least there are going to be between four to five to six groups that will be in the same position. Okay. And then they will start to manufacture. So around the summer, we might hit the one or one and a half billion uh, shots that will be ready uh, for the market. Okay, thank you so, so much. Thank you for being here. Good luck. Please keep us posted on how you feel and if there's anything we need to know. Hope you're going to be okay and you get the antibodies so we can move forward and next year have, have you here for a personal gala. Everyone thank that's you. listening thank to you, us, Jessie. thank you so much. Please share this on Facebook and we're also going to have it on YouTube. Have a great day and stay safe.